the wood elves returned and captured the weary dwarves. But Bilbo popped on his ring just in time. The wood elves took the dwarves into the Elven King's halls and closed the gates. Oh, caught again. Without Gandalf, I'll have to do the rescuing. I'd better not let those elves catch me, or we'll never make it out of here. These dwarves are useless. <laughs> Aloha, everybody. Welcome to part nine of The Hobbit. We just made it to a new chapter, Barrels Out of Bonds. Elves have keen senses. I'd better not get too close, even with my ring. So in this level, the dwarves got themselves captured by all of the elves, and now Bilbo has to go and break them out of the prison, but that means we're going to be doing a lot of sneaking around. This is not a combat-centric stage like the last one where we killed dozens upon dozens upon dozens of spiders. No, in this level, we got to make sure that we get by without being seen, and elves are everywhere patrolling the area, so uh, that's an instant game over if they see you. You have to go back all the way to your last checkpoint, which again, with this game, you have to constantly keep saving in order to have checkpoints. The Hobbit's not perfect. But luckily, we do have one ring to rule them all. One ring to find them. One ring to bring them all, and in the darkness, bind them. I don't know where that came from. But either way, it turns us invisible, and whenever we're in the elves' eyesight, our body will glow red, which means don't turn off the ring, don't pull it off your finger, because otherwise they're going to see you, and that's no good. I wonder what this is for. It's very important what you just picked up, Bilbo. That blue crystal thing is actually a key, and we absolutely need it in order to finish this level. So before you go into the building, go left of the gate to pick up that blue key. The other three will be getting uh, along the way, so... Very important you grab that. Hello, Bilbo. You and your companions have done us no harm. I fear that we are the stubborn ones to keep your friends locked in our cellars. I will help you free them. To get into the cellars, you'll need three crystals. Elven King Thranduil keeps them close by his throne. Be wary of the other wood elves, Bilbo. I am the only friend you have here. Thanks, Liana the Elf. A character who did not exist in the book itself? <laughs> We met her before in the third stage, Troll Hole, and again, the only reason she really exists for this game is so she can teach Bilbo how the puzzles work, because Bilbo wouldn't know about these three crystals, she wouldn't know about these three red orbs that we need to, to activate the box puzzle so that we can open up the gate where all the dwarves are being held. How else are we going to get to Thorin, Feely, Keely, Balan, Dwalin, Oin, Gloin, Dory, Nori, Ori, Bifer, Bofer, Bomber, Electro, Diglett, Nidoran, Mankey, Venus, Orbitata, Firo, Pidgey, Sea King, Jolteon, Dragonite, Ghastly, Ponyta, Vaporeon, Polyrath, Butterfree! Unless we get information from Lyanna the Elf. <laughs> uh, so like I said, your body glows red whenever the elves can see you. At least they, they should see you, but because we have the ring on, we're invisible and, you know... You can't see things that aren't there, but uh, we do have a charge with the ring. It does have a timer. When you equip it, there's a little energy bar right next to the ring in the top right corner that will drain, and even if you don't want to take it off, once the bar runs out, Bilbo will just, I don't know, it'll just slip out of his hand. <laughs> I'm not sure how this works gameplay-wise. Is, is Bilbo's fingers, like, really greasy? I don't know. But the ring falls off after a certain period of time, and you need to build up energy in order to wield it again, because otherwise it's pretty broken. Um, you can run past the elves while wearing the ring, and you're, because you're running and not tiptoeing or sneaking, you'll be making a lot of padding noises with your feet, and they will react. They'll, they'll actually voice, you know, like, oh my god, what's that? Like, what's that noise? I think I heard something. Uh, and for the most part, I've never been caught, even though they keep saying things like that. The only way to get caught with the ring on hand is to actually bump into them. Like, Bilbo warns you not to get too close, and they do make noises and, and react to the footsteps that they're hearing, but 
I don't know, I've never had them catch me just from walking around them too much. Though I've never tried running around in circles one character until they eventually realized that something was up, so I don't know. But I have bumped into an elf accidentally while wearing the ring, and as soon as you bump into them, they know you're there. Game over. Go back to the last checkpoint, so yeah. That box puzzle, pretty simple. You just line up the icons on the top of the boxes with the platform that they're supposed to go on. Gee, I wonder how people are supposed to break into this jail cell. <laughs> Do you think the elves could make it any more complicated? It's so confusing! Oh my god, how could they possibly know? <laughs> they have either great courage or great folly. Hmm. So there was, I, I ran, you know, they, they made a noise, they, like, they, they reacted to it, but nothing really comes of it. So yeah, I just make sure that I have lots of ring, and then I just mad dash to where I need to go. So we have to get to Thorin so that we can find out what to do next, because... It's not enough to collect all of the different items that we need to gather. There's actually a lot of plant stuff that I picked up in the Elven King's throne room because we're going to need it to drug a guard later. Um, but we also need to be know that we can do these things because you have to talk to certain characters before Bilbo gets the idea to do certain things and until certain gates will open up because Lyanna the elf is helping us. So. Again, I can run haphazardly. I don't need to sneak or tiptoe, so that's the good thing about the ring. The ring's pretty damn broken in The Hobbit. As soon as you're invisible, nothing's really a problem when it comes to stealth. Bilbo, I thought I'd never see you again. Is everyone all right? You must find a way to escape, Bilbo. My ears may be old, but I swear I hear rushing water beyond that hallway. Explore that hall and see if you can find an escape route. Sorry, Balin. I think I called you Thorin earlier. Now that we talked to Balin, uh, we gotta go... And again, you know what they do pretty nicely with this stage as well? Every time a new objective is added, Show they yourself. usually add a whole bunch of purple crystals as a pathway guiding you to where you should be walking, where you should be going. So sometimes you'll come to a ladder that you've already climbed before and see that the purple crystals are back and know that you have to go back to Balin, you know. It's time to get these barrels packed up and sent to Lake Town. Hmm. This looks promising. If I can free the dwarves, I'll pack them into barrels and send them down the river to Lake Town. So now I have to go back and tell Balin of this plan to stick him in barrels just like how it happened in the books. This will not have an extended action scene with Legolas, like in the Peter Jackson Hobbit movies, which, uh... <laughs> Oops, that was my phone. <laughs> it's out of battery. Sorry about that. But, uh... I never really talked about the Peter Jackson Hobbit movies all that much. I've mentioned them before. I've mentioned how this is a little bit more faithful to the books. Uh, sort of. I mean, it's still a video game where you're killing lots of enemies and doing lots of puzzles and meeting characters that weren't in the book, but, you know... Take my word for it, it's more faithful, I swear. <laughs> I found a way out. The elves send barrels down the river to Lake Town. If we pack ourselves into barrels, the elves will make our escape for us. We shall be bruised and battered to pieces and drowned too. But I suppose we have no choice. You'll need to put Galley on the butler to sleep before you get into the barrels. An elf? It's all right. She's a friend. You must make Gallion drowsy by putting three kinds of herbs in his drink. One herb is in the lake behind the throne room. Another is in a small clearing in the courtyard. The third is in an old cave in the courtyard. Beware. The caves were once home to spiders. This potion will melt away the thickest webs. Find those herbs, Bilbo. And don't worry about Gallion. The herbs won't harm him. Damn it, I thought I was done with spiders. Yeah, we gotta fight some more spiders. Some more green poisonous spiders that, uh... I hope you still have some antidote potions. <laughs> so, the Great Gate is not the only entrance to these caves. The spider web must be in there. I do hope no one's home. Bilbo, it's a video game. Of course they're home. Of course you're gonna be fighting spiders. Come on. <laughs> 
You've been doing this adventure a long enough time. I think you know how this works by now. Come on. There's no elves on this upper platform, but I'm still putting on the ring anyway, just on the off chance that they might look super far ahead from, like, somewhere else. I don't know, I'm being paranoid. Then again, the ring is just so damn fun to use. I love using this thing, man. I never want to take it off. It's just, it's, it's precious to me, you know? My precious. Anywho. Uh, the Peter Jackson Hobbit movies, I saw them once. I haven't seen them a second time. And I saw them pretty much as they were releasing. So I saw the first movie uh, long before the second movie, long before the third movie. There's another blue key that we need for later. Keep note of that. Um, and I just definitely didn't think they were as good as the, you know, the original Lord of the Rings trilogy from the 2000s. Because I, it just seems like a lot of busy added stuff to, to extend the Hobbit into a three movie trilogy. Battle of the Five Armies, you know, people rag on the Star Wars prequels, but at least something happens in the Star Wars prequels. I found Battle of the Five Armies so boring, I just thought like, why is this its own movie? I, oh god, you should have just made this two movies, why would you, uh... I don't know, it just goes on too long, it's stretching material out way longer than it needs to be, and I don't know. I just didn't love them the way I did the Lord of the Rings movies. I don't know. Ah, look at all these spiders. <laughs> I really hope there are no arachnophobes watching these videos who are just like deathly terrified. I've had people who reacted who, who haven't been watching the Hobbit playthrough. But they've seen the thumbnail of the last bit video where uh, you fight the three spiders, because I made that the thumbnail, and they were like, ah, god, why? Damn it, Clement. <laughs> it's not my fault, there are spiders in the Hobbit. I didn't make the book. I didn't make the game, okay? That's just how it rolls, man. It's just how it rolls. <laughs> but, uh, sorry, arachnophobes. I swear we're never going to see another spider ever again. Maybe. Potentially. Ah, yeah. but, uh... Yeah, I mean, I like a lot of the actors involved. I think when I feel like when the movies are actually recreating stuff from the book, from the Hobbit book, like the scene where Bilbo is talking with Gollum in the cave and Andy Serkis reprised his role as Gollum, like that was really fun. That was something I was very interested to see. I'm glad I got that. But every time they're introducing stuff with like Legolas and um, Evangeline Lilly's character, and again, when they get washed off in the barrels, in the book, they just go to Lake Town, you know? They just, they go to their destination. There's no extended action scene where all the goblins- There's Galleon's cup. I'd better be quick about this. There's no extended action scene where all the goblins are fighting the elves and stuff, and it's just like, ah. Uh, it's too much busy work, you know? It's too much going on. When the herbs take effect, this room will be wide open. Oh my, that was quick. Bilbo, you should never drug people. You're a piece of shit, Bilbo. You're a piece of shit. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, now that the guard is drugged, we should be able to get all these dwarves into the barrels and wash them away. But the problem is that all of the dwarves are in proximity to each other, except for King Thorin. We have to go out of our way to find King Thorin. But I gotta go back to the exact same place where we talked to Balin multiple times. So uh, you get pretty comfortable, pretty familiar with this particular He's stealth route. There. The good news is you can still hide behind barrels when the ring is off so I can get my ring to charge up and stuff. So, you know. Stealth mechanics still work for the most part, as long as you're tiptoeing when the ring's off, you can do this. I don't know if anyone's ever done a no-ring run of this stage. I don't even know if it's possible, but I think that would be interesting to see in a playthrough. Too bad The Hobbit's not exactly a popular game, so no one probably has tried it. <laughs> Mr. Baggins, you will never cease to amaze. Now you must find Thorin. They won't tell us where he is. He is in the deep cellar. There is only one way into the deep cellars, through the dark water caverns. It's dangerous, but it's the only way. I don't like sending you down there. 
I must rescue Thorin, and this is the only way in. Don't worry. It shouldn't take too long. And right off the bat, our stick now does more damage. And we can unleash the spin attack with the stick just like we can with the sword. So yeah, awesome. Hunky dory. But yeah, we got a whole bunch of creepy crawlies, a whole bunch of lizard things. I don't even know what those are. I'm sure those are like actual, like confirmed Lord of the Rings creatures, but I, I, I'm not really sure what those are right now. I know, I'm not a good enough Lord of the Rings fan, I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't love the Hobbit trilogy by Peter Jackson, I'm sorry. <laughs> Although I think the consensus is a lot of people were pretty disappointed with the trilogy, but I don't know. I just found the Battle of the Five Armies movie to be so boring. It was just action after action after action of a story that, like, in the book is fairly quick and it's not this long and, you know, it just felt unnecessary. It just felt like a really unnecessary movie to watch. I know, they were milking the drama, they were milking all the foreshadowing. Hey guys, did you know this is a prequel to The Lord of the Rings? That's why we gotta introduce Saruman and keep talking about Sauron and stuff. And it's like, guys, we know. We know it's a prequel to The Lord of the Rings. You don't need to keep inserting all these characters and foreshadowing all these moments, because it's like, we know the, that trilogy exists if we want to watch it. Like, I could pop it into my DVD player right now, you know? But either way, I I'm not a huge movie critic. I'm not here to tell you you're crazy for liking the Hobbit movies. They're directed well. They're acted well. It's, I just found, you know, there's a lot of editing you need to do to that thing. It'd be great as a great one movie, or even two movies, because I feel like it, it, you can make the case for two movies with The Hobbit, but not three. Three's a little overkill, if you ask me. But, you know, that's just me talking about The Hobbit movies. What did you think of The Hobbit movies? Tell me in the comments section. Surely you've watched The Hobbit movies. With Martin Freeman and Benedict Cabbage Patch. You know. <laughs> Sorry, that's a joke that just never gets old with me. I'm sorry. It's an unfortunate final name, Cumberbatch, I know, but it's just, it's just I want to say Cabbage Patch every time. I feel like if I ever met Benedict <laughs> Cumberbatch in real life, I might accidentally say Cabbage Patch, and that, that's, that would be really awkward. That'd be really, really awkward. I've just said that name so many times to my friends. It's a bad habit, you know? It's a bad, bad habit. I also got this habit right now where I've been, like, grinding my teeth, and I have to keep my tongue busy with, like, gum and stuff, because otherwise I just, like, keep grinding my teeth together, and I, I don't know why I started getting this habit, but it's hard to fucking break, man. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend it. I wouldn't recommend getting into habits like that. Habits like equipping a ring that turns you invisible that's... Okay, that, that, that's actually pretty good. You should keep doing that. That's pretty good. Always hang on to that ring, as far as I'm concerned. That ring, really, really good. This platforming thing, I don't know if it's busted or what. I feel like I'm supposed to go left and climb that structure there, but I can't. And in all my test playthroughs, I couldn't either. In my test playthrough, though, I was able to just slide off just far enough to reach the rope and to grab the rope that way. But I don't think that's how I'm supposed to do it. I feel like I was supposed to climb the ledge to the left, so I'm not sure if the game is borked and they screwed up, but uh, I found an alternative in this playthrough. I was just like, well, I can't seem to grab the ledge from there, so I'm just going to take a giant leap of faith from here. Uh, there we go. Thank God for the lawn jump. Thank God for the lawn jump. It's not easy platforming, The Hobbit. It's very, very treacherous platforming. This is how games were back in the PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2, GameCube era type days, you know? That's why everyone's like, Oh my god, Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy is so hard right now. Because <laughs> that's what fucking video games were like, man. The platforming was tight, and you had to really make sure that every jump counted. It was super freaking important. Also, I loved how many imps I just killed with that walking stick just now. I did a ground pound, and so many died. 
You know what we need? We need Lord of the Rings Warriors. <laughs> we need Lord of the Rings the Musu game. Like uh, Hyrule Warriors and Fire Emblem Warriors, you know? <laughs> play as Aragorn, play as Gandalf, play as Legolas, play as Bilbo and Frodo and all the characters as they take on armies upon armies of goblins and uruk and uh, orcs and, you know? <laughs> that would be the shit. And then you get to play as the villains, so like you get to play as Saruman and Sauron and and uh, Wormtongue. That'd be freaking incredible. Koei Tecmo, come on! You gotta get that. <laughs> you gotta get that Middle Earth Tolkien license. <laughs> J.R.R. Tolkien is is rolling in his grave. Do you think J.R.R. Tolkien would appreciate the Hobbit on GameCube? Huh? Do you think he'd play this and he'd be like, "This is a great." Great service to my franchise, yes. The Hobbit video game is just as good as the book. <laughs> okay, let's not get crazy. Let's not get crazy. I'm getting delirious. But, you know. I'm just crawling through this cave so I can get to Thorin's jail cell, because apparently this is a back door to Thorin's jail cell. It's nice that Liana the Elf knows about all this stuff, let me tell ya. And this is going to be the last time we see Leanna, I believe, until the final stage. Or maybe she doesn't show up in the final stage, so I might be wrong about that. But, uh... You know. They're inventing characters for these games. Gotta use them. Like I said, this is not a 100% run-through where I get every single Courage Crystal or every single treasure chest with all of the silver pennies inside. Uh... I feel like that would make the levels feel even longer than they already are, and, uh, you know, I'm not an expert to the point where I know where every single item was. I test play through it, everything, but I didn't want to test play through so much that I was just, like, obsessing and getting sure, making sure that I was getting every single thing, so, you know. I'm probably missing a few trinkets here and there, but whatever. And there's Thorin! King Thorin. That was most uncomfortable. Upon my word! Gandalf spoke true, as usual. A fine burglar you are. <laughs> I am at your service. Now to open this cell. So, the table actually has, like, icons where the holes should be, but they don't actually match the crystal you're supposed to drop. Not that it matters, there's no penalty for getting the wrong key. But I feel like, with the way the table is laid out, it should be, like, the opposite of what it says. But, you know, whatever. Just put the crystals until they drop. The rest of the dwarves are waiting above. After you, King Thorin Oakenshield. Good work, Mr. Baggins. I suspect I'll be bruised and battered to pieces. Get moving, burglar! We continue to Lake Town! That's all there is to it, folks. Just activate the gate, and this stage is over. A king in a barrel? Yeah. I do hope I put the lids on tight. Oh! Off we go! <laughs> Dwarves were not meant for this sort of travel. I can hardly breathe in here! Wait for me! And that is Barrels Out of Bond, ladies and gentlemen. Isn't the ring super useful? <laughs>
It just makes the stealth sections completely a joke, you know? They do have a pretty good stealth section coming up uh, in two levels from now. Not the next level, but the level after. But, uh, yeah, that ring, damn useful. Damn precious. So precious. Anyway, folks, we're going to Lake Town in part 10. See you then.